or not. Finally! Here we go, where I left off. Chapter, or Day 7, Eyes of Death Perception 2. For me, it was a Wednesday, October 27th. I'm about to get closer to Halloween. Seventh, the Wednesday, eighth, ninth. No, oh, it's not gonna be on Friday the thirteenth. Anyway, let me take a sippy. Back then, the whole mansion was like a giant playground. The garden, a deep forest. The house, a tall castle. We played in our own little world, which would take days to explore. Every day was fun. No one thought about ever growing up, and we believed that days and nights would always be the same. It was just a childhood spent playing like puppies. The puppy! We got along wonderfully, and were the best of playmates. Whenever I turned back, Akio would be there, waving her hands and hiding shyly. Yeah, always the same. At that time, the mansion was a giant playground. I've been through this. I slowly awaken and open my eyes. The morning light wraps around me and my sleepiness starts to lift. As the last vestige is clear, I sense I had I had a very nostalgic dream. No oh, god the lines. As soon as I open my eyes I start to see those terrible things jump into my vision. My head stabs with pain. Gh I scramble for the glasses by my pillow and put them on. I take in some air. After taking a few deep breaths, I manage to calm down. Why did I so early? See those lines so clearly this early in the morning. It's difficult to see the lines of death in buildings. It's usually hard to see them and see them so clearly like I just did now is rare. Once more, I even saw those points. My headache is getting worse, too. Since they said these eyes were attracting things that weren't good, I think our clue to these vampires are certainly not good. So maybe it's all affecting my eyes and making them stronger? Can't be. I'm probably just tired. Maybe I fell asleep with my clothes on and got a cold. Please excuse me. Hisui enters and greets me with a bow. Ah, uh, morning, Hisui. Yes, good morning, Shigi-sama. Hisui brings me my uniform as usual. But I can tell she's a bit angry. For a reason doesn't need to be said. She must be angry over yesterday because I didn't get back until very late. Worked my way to my room, then slept. Hisui, last night, um... Shigi-sama, there's no need to give me any excuses. That's very quickly, she starts walking towards the door. Please excuse me. Nissan has prepared your breakfast, so please hurry to the sitting room. Yeah, I planned on doing so. Nishimi sama, Akio would like to talk with you about your late return last night. So please hurry to the sitting room. Though you're in trouble now. She shuts the door emotionlessly. Uh, well, come to think of it, this is a perfectly natural result. Akio is the only one in the city room. Akio stands in the kitchen, humming away. Akio doesn't say anything when she sees me. She sips her tea quietly. Hey! Good morning, Akio. I try to greet her as naturally as I can. Akio's eyebrows twitch. Akio's eyebrow twitches as she places her teacup down and slowly looks at me. Good morning, Nissan. It was quite late when you came home last night, wasn't it? No, not really. It was at most a little past one o'clock. Quite normal for a healthy young man in high school to be up, right? I see. My bedtime is also past midnight, so I was up at that time. But I would come home much earlier than that. Uh, well, there were some pressing circumstances and I couldn't get back. But I did return, so... Yes, very late at night, and you went back to your room. 
without saying anything or even making a noise. Goodness, you acted like you were out doing something you felt guilty over. Uh Her stare is pure ice. This is the second time, and I'm sure even though Akia looks calm, she is quite angry. Nissan. I don't know what went on at the Arima house, but here the curfew is 8 o'clock. It is a rule that must not be broken. The gate will be locked after that, so please don't climb in like a robber. Oh, you knew? The surveillance camera showed me quite clearly. It's a good thing Croc realized it was you and turned off the alarm system, because otherwise you probably would be, be detained right now. Oh. I should thank Ohaku-san, then. And, uh... Akia, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have kept quiet about it. If you understand, then it is fine. Please make sure you observe your curfew from now on. I'll overlook it this time. About that, Akia. What is it? This is a little hard to say. I have something to do tonight, too. I don't know when I'll be back, but I'm not going to do anything bad. Dare. Akia's gaze tightens. Kohaku. She suddenly stands up. Kohaku-san comes in from the kitchen. Yes, what is it, Akia-san? I'll be going to school. Get the preparations ready. Huh? I haven't made Shiki-san's breakfast yet. You can leave this person alone. He seems he can do everything by himself. Proud of it! Akio strides. Akio strides towards the lobby. Kaku-san sighs. Shiki-san, you should not make Akio san so upset. You're her big brother, so please treat her better, okay? Saying that, she walks after Akio. The teacup sits, she's still steaming. Well, in short. I left by myself to calmly consider my situation. Guess I'm skipping breakfast today. Or you could just make it yourself. God. I should stop by a convenience store on my way and buy some bread. Fourth period class is about modern society and how it sucks. The room in the classroom is somewhat lighter than usual. It's Wednesday, so there's less. So there's one less hour of classes than usual. Okay. After lunch, there's homeroom and an hour of deciding what to do for the culture festival. How about a cosplay cafe or a haunted house? Or a wrestling tournament? What's more, tomorrow is the school holiday, and after this fourth period is over, it's practi practically vacation already. It's only natural for everyone to be waiting for the end of, end of class bell to ring. I give a big yawn. The class is completely unchanged. The whole day progresses with nothing out of the ordinary. Come to think of it, I've been through so many strange experiences, I almost feel odd just sitting in class. And after classes are over at nightfall, so I'll have to go out once more with Arkuid. Thinking of that, I really don't have the time to be fooling around here. I look at my reflection in the window glass. Tono Shinji's face seems to be happy for some reason. I tell you my expression. I should be happy, I should be angry. It's not like roaming the streets with Arkwood is fun or anything, but Baka Vampire. So why am I acting like this? What? Arkwood. There's really something wrong. Looking out of the window into the rear courtyard, I can see an illusion of her waving her hand at me and saying, hey. Hey, wait a minute! What? I push myself onto the window and look down. I can only see the very edge of the rear courtyard, but without a doubt, Arkwood, in her usual manner, is at my school. I look around the classroom. Fortunately, there's no one who noticed a strange foreigner waving to me. What's she thinking? I moan to myself as I clutch my head. But uh, complaining does me no good. It was about 20 minutes till lunch. What do you gotta do, Shiki? If you leave her alone, who knows what she'll do? Oh man, do we go to the courtyard now? Do we pray she doesn't do anything until classes are over? Or just say fucking ignore her? 
Oh god, how important is school? Oh, hmm, well... I know how important school is. <laughs> I should totally go the delinquent cheeky route and just, you know, fuck school, fuck the mansion, fuck it all, let's go kill demons. Then I'll buy a motorcycle and some sunglasses. They'll have to be clip on, so it's, you know, buy regular glasses as well. I'll be one badass motherfucker. Sounds good. That's right. Preventable disasters should be stopped before they happen. Before she can start any interesting trouble, I have to take her off the school grounds. Sensei, I feel my anemia coming, so I need to leave. I raise my hand, and after getting permission from the teacher, fly out of the classroom. Does it even work that way? <sighs> ah, you're here. That was a pretty fast sprint. You're looking pretty lively this morning, Shiki. My jaw hangs wide open. It's a sprint to the courtyard. Arku increased me with her usual radiance. It's smaller than I expected. I thought a school would be much bigger than this. Gah! I grab Arkwood's arm. You, come with me. Dragging Arkwood behind me, I dash to a place where people won't see us. Hey, what are you doing taking me here all of a sudden? This place is no fun at all. Arkwood seems to be disappointed in this place, but it's not like school is a really interesting place to begin with. What are you, what are you doing? That's my line, Arkwood. I let go of her arm and throws my index finger towards her face. Eh? What do you mean? I'm asking why you're walking around during daytime and why you came to my school. You haven't even healed yet, so why can't you just settle down and rest? But since you said you would help me, I thought I'd look for clues during the day. Jinkies. I didn't want to make you do any extra work. Don't worry about that. Since I said I'd help, any extra work we'll do or any extra work we'll do together, so just forget about it. Jeez. You're weakest during the middle of the day, yet you still leave. Do you enjoy making me worry? Uh, I'm sorry. No, as long as you understand, it's okay. Arkwood? I'm sorry for making you worry. No, actually, thanks. I think my heart beats loudly. Arkwood apologizing like this is a bit out of the ordinary, at least I think. And I think terribly cute. But you're at fault too, Shiki. I was watching for the longest time from the courtyard, but you never noticed me. I didn't know how to get inside, so I was thinking about dashing up to where you were. Dash up? You mean to my classroom on the third floor? Yeah, so it would be difficult on the veranda. It's really easy to jump up there. Uh, I take it all back. As usual, she completely lacks any common sense. Good. That would have been pretty if you did that. I breathe a sigh of relief. I don't think many people notice her. In the first place, there's only a few deaths that can look out into the courtyard. And so why the heck did you come to my school? The city were looking for clues. I just felt something from around here. Then I picked up your scent and realized it was your school. So you weren't thinking you just came for no reason? give a frown. Is she a dog or something? Well, excuse me, Shiki. I came here for a reason. There's hardly any traces of the dead here, so I want to see it for myself. Really? Well, there's no traces of the dead here, then shouldn't this place be on the court? There's no one at school at night, so if the dead wanted to pray, they would go to town, not school. Well, that does make sense. There's nothing strange here. I can't really sense the dead, but since my eyes since my eyes see death, I can tell without taking off my glasses. I see. If you say so, Shiki, then there's nothing strange about this place, perhaps. Not perhaps, definitely. 
Awkward looks like she doesn't believe me. And then the chime rings announcing the end of fourth period. I almost forgot. Oh no, is it lunch already? Even though most people don't stay by the scrubs, since it's lunchtime, there'll be lots of people walking by. Anyway, if we stay here any longer, people will see us. I'll keep my promise for prom my promise for sure, so just go home and rest. We may see the enemy tonight. Oh. You sound like you want me out of here, she. She starts to look angry again. Uh it's just your imagination. Hurry on back. Leave now, go. Otherwise things might get a little hairy. Go. Go. I push her from behind. In case she wants to say something, and she just leaves silently. After watching her quit leave, I return to the courtyard. What is it? Someone's in this way. Oh god! That's an angry look. Senpai? No mistake, it's Seal Senpai. But why is she making that expression? She has a fearsome expression that almost makes me doubt it's actually her. Senpai! I call out to her as I run. Senpai simply stands there watching me. Maybe Senpai hasn't noticed me. Oh. What are you doing here? The same for you, Tonokun. What were you doing here? Unless lunch has just begun and so for you to be back here, you must have skipped fourth period class. Of course not! I just flew out of the classroom, that's all. My answer's not any enthusiasm. It's her normal smile, but it seems like she's glaring at me. Those eyes full of hate. More than that, did you eat lunch yet? If not, would you like to eat with me? I try and play it all off casually. I'm sorry, I already have someone else. Please ask me some other time. Though, For an instant, she looks incredibly down as she says that. Senpai? What's wrong? You don't look too well. No, that isn't it. It's just that it's true that fun things end rather quickly to Hokun. She gives a brilliant smile in contrast to before. With that, she walks aside by herself. The debate over what to do for culture fest, eh? Let's see what you got. Since everyone's opinions are different, the decision gets postponed till next week. <laughs> okay. That's uh, one way of doing it. Put off the put off the decision until no one cares anymore. By the time it's over, it's late in the afternoon. Everyone gets up tiredly from their chairs and leaves the classroom. Well then, there's nothing to do in the classroom. I should get ready for tonight and go back to the mansion. Or should I? No, I should go back to the mansion. I don't swing by anywhere else and head right back to the mansion. The sun hasn't quite set, so Akia probably isn't back yet. That Akia. I wonder if she's so mad like this morning. Well, that can't be helped either. I can't tell her the truth, so I'll probably continue to just be hated as a terrible older brother. Sounds like a plan. Welcome back, Shigi-sama. The Sui bows as I enter the mansion. Yeah, I'm back. Thanks for greeting me, Sui. It's been a week since I've come back, but I'm not used to this yet. Um, Akiha is it back yet? No. She told me to tell you she would be back, especially late tonight. So please eat dinner on your own, she goes on. I knew she'd still be angry from this morning. <sighs> I saw my shoulders as I start to walk from my room. And then, she goes on. You see, we look around the lobby before she speaks again. Forgive me for asking an awkward question, but will you be leaving tonight again, she goes on? Eh? Uh, she fixates her emotionless eyes on me. 
think she simply wants to know what time we'll be back because she's so dedicated to serving. But letting her know means Akiha. I should uh, tell her the truth or not let anyone know. No one must know my secret. Well. I don't think he actually even knows when he'll be back, so I want to see what he will tell her as the truth. I'm gonna go hang out with this foreign girl that I met. Could get pretty wild and randy. I'll be back maybe before the sun rises. Come on. That's right. No matter how hard I try, I can't hide from Hisui and Kohaku-san, who are in charge of maintaining the mansion. But yeah, there's that security system. So the least I can let them know when I'll be gone every night in the following days. Yeah, to tell the truth, I'll probably pr probably leave for a number of nights starting now. I swear I'm not just playing around or doing anything bad. Aki will probably end up hating me, but I can't stop now. Yeah, the vampire is still somewhere in town preying on victims. As a person who lives here, I can't just pretend like I didn't see it. I know it's a burden to you, Isui, but please overlook it. I don't know what hell I'll be back, so please just leave the gate unlocked. Shiki-sama, are you saying you will not tell us why? Yeah, sorry, Isui. You can think I'm truly totally responsible, but please don't ask. I, I don't want to have to lie. Ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. No, you are my master. A servant does not despise her master like that. She speaks plainly and without any expression. The conversation ends and I go up to return to my room. A servant does not despise the master, at least not openly. Please wait. Give him my impertinence, but after crying out, she tightens both of her hands as she looks over at me. If you'd like me to, Shikisama, I can keep your leaving a secret from Akiya-sama. Eh? You mean you're not? Tell? Yes. After dinner, it's extremely rare for Akira Sama to leave her room. Nate's son and I are responsible for conducting a patrol right before she sleeps, so if I do not tell the truth, she will not know. Yeah, that helps. It helps, but is it okay? Is it she your employer? I told you, you are my master, Shiki Sama. Uh, I'm kind of happy. I always have to tell her to stop adding Sama, but at times like this, I think I'm incredibly lucky. How can I help with me, Abby? Yeah, that helps, so if you can, please do so. And please use the rear entrance tonight. The front entrance will be locked, but if you have the key and use the servant's entrance, you can come and leave undetected. Oh? There's the servant's entrance? No wonder I never saw you leave through the gate. No, the only one who uses that is Nason. She has the key, so I will give it to you later. Well then, she says, after which she bows and disappears. Alright! Help just came from an unexpected source. With this, it seems I can keep my problems with Arcoid about worrying Akia. Or without worrying Akia. After dinner, I go back to my room. It's almost 10 o'clock. While I was eating, Hisui placed the key on my desk. Now then, shall I go? Placing my knife in my pocket, I'll leave my room as quietly as I can. You call that a knife? It's probably because of all the recent murders, but it's only 10 o'clock and there's no one in the park. The empty night hangs overhead. There, a white figure stands. Yo, Whitey! Cheeky! As soon as she sees me, Akuri angrily yells at me. Hey, what time do you think it is? You're 20 minutes late! Uh, it seems she came here right on time. Yeah, sorry. I left before 10 o'clock, but it took some time trying to leave the mansion without Akio noticing. I'll definitely be on time next time, so please forgive me. Jeez. You guys seem to realize we are going to go killing. You can't be late for murder time! It's murder time! Arkwood practically pouts. 
Don't tell me she was waiting long before the promised time. Harkwood, since what time were you waiting for me? Me? I came here as soon as I woke up, so... Hmm... Probably since 7 o'clock? 7? You were waiting for more than 3 hours? What in the world was she thinking, coming 3 hours early? It seems I'm strange. As if truly amazed, Arkwood mumbles to herself. Oh, I'm probably to blame because I was late, but don't you have some issues too? If you if you come before the agreed time, then of course you'll have to wait. Hey, that's something entirely different. The fact you were late doesn't change. Well, that's true. But why did you wait three hours? If you had that much time, couldn't you have just gone back to your room? Played some video? I don't know why either. It somehow was fun, and while I was thinking it was nice waiting for you, it was already 10 o'clock. Uh? Fun? Why? Who knows? Didn't I say I didn't understand it myself? Maybe because you killed me. At that time, something broke that couldn't be healed. I think it's strange myself, but I can't understand what's broken inside me. Uh... Having her say that is very troubling. Having sliced her into 17 pieces, if she says there's something wrong, well, all I can do is to apologize. It's okay, we don't have much time, so we can't waste time talking about pointless things, she keeps. Yeah, seeing that really helps me out. But if you're ever late again, I'll just have to go to your house and pick you up. You're the one who couldn't keep the promise, so you have no complaints, right? L d no way! I'll keep it, but random unfortunate circumstances like today could happen at any time. If I'm late, that'd be the last thing you should do. Look, don't come to my house, even if it even if it's a mistake. What's more, Aki doesn't know about all this, so please don't make things more complicated than they are. Mm hmm? Akiha? Your sister that doesn't look at all like you? You said a little too much, but yes, her. I see. That scared of your little sister? Shut up. I just don't want to worry her. At the very best, I'm a brother to her, so I don't want to tire her out even further. Hmm. You really are sweet to your sister, Ishiki. I'm basically nice to everyone. Well, recently there's been, ex there's been an exception to that. Haha, <laughs> that's me! You're so dense. That was an insult, not a compliment. Not at all. To you, I'm an exception, right? How could I not like that? She smiles again. A child's smile, bright and carefree. Mm. As long as I don't try to skip through any scenes, it doesn't crash. Oh man. Ten whole minutes and more. If I keep seeing that, I'll lose all my venom. I'm tired all of a sudden. Let's start looking for the vampire arcwood. Yes, it's about time. Then we'll start walking around town. Shiki, I want you to take off your glasses, but is that alright? Take off my glasses? Why? It's hard to notice them, it's just to me. I can sense the presence of humans and non-humans, but that won't help me find the vampire. All I can sense is the presence, but with your eyes you can quickly tell me between living and dead things. So it's a waste if we don't use what we have, right? Mm. Certainly I can understand what she's saying. But taking off my glasses means... I know... You and I can feel your eyes getting stronger in these past few days. And if you keep doing this, it may not be good for your health. I'm still sane despite that. But the choice lies up to you, so I'm not going to force you. If you think it's alright to do so, take her. Take your glasses off and follow me. Take off my glasses and walk around town? I haven't done that since I received these glasses eight years ago. In the first place, the things that I, the things I see without my glasses give me such a headache. It'd be easy to imagine what would happen if I walked around town. But still... It's like Arkwood who keeps on going even though her wound hasn't healed. Tono Shiki should do the same and pay back his debt. Arkwood, I... I'm fine. Isn't it just a headache? Compared to the pain her 
to the pain her body must be feeling. This is nothing. It's fine. I can take off my glasses. It's a small price to pay to make our search easier. I see. Then let's go, Shiki. Markwood turns around and starts walking. I take off my glasses as I follow her. And if this was an actual game, we could have like explore the city gameplay. But it's not. Like I follow Arkwood. I haven't walked in scenery so riddled with lines since my hospitalization back then. Strangely enough, I don't get a headache. It seems just seeing them won't cause it. It's not the thin lines in the buildings, but seeing the lines on the people walking by that makes me sick. Before, I thought they were just lines that were easy to cut along. But now I know that they're the death of things. That's why I feel disgust first. It's not that those figures of people scribbled over the lines are disgusting. Just seeing that, that humans are in existence so close to death, that makes me feel like throwing up. We walk the nighttime streets. Arkwood doesn't say anything. She just continues to stride forth resolutely. We walk for hours in the midst of town. In the end, we don't see one aberration, not one person wrapped in death. Shiki, you can put your glasses back on. Seems like no matter how much we search tonight, it'll be useless. Arkwood concludes with a sigh. I put my glasses back on. My vision returns to normal and I relax. Useless? Is it okay to just decide that all of a sudden? We've only looked everywhere once, right? No, just once is enough. The presence of the dead tends to linger around a place. I haven't sensed any of them around at all, so there aren't any that are active. The enemy is alert now that most of its dead are defeated. Seriously, he really is a coward. I was so prepared to finish it all tonight, but it appears he still wants to play hide and seek. Awkward bites her lips, dissatisfied. Of course I am. You went through such trouble to help me, but it's all meaningless now. Well, I don't really mind. If you're that dissatisfied, then I don't mind going out to look again. Maybe if I concentrate more, we can find something. That's no good. I can't strain you anymore. Strain? I'm not really straining. You are. You may not realize it, but if you abuse your brain anymore, you might end up disabled. Brain problems. out all the reasons. Things in this world float from that, derive from that, and, pres and preserve their current form. You and I, vampires and humans, we all originated from that. Things became more complex and separate, and cannot return to that original source in the beginning. You're talking about evolution? But you understand that there exists the one, right? But no matter how different a form something takes from the great source, it's all still a derivative. So even if it is only a slender line, there's a thread connecting to the source. The source of all things. The record that records the beginning and the end of all things. Being connected to that means knowing the end of all things. Originally, the brain has the ability to control reception and transmission, but most humans close off all of these circuits except for themselves. But there are people who have their circuits openly. Will 
about a single use of magic circuits, there are humans who, despite not being a transcendental or a transcendental race, have the potential to create transcendent phenomena. Magi classify them, so, classify them as being physics or psychics. While still human, there are mutants who are born with magic circuits, such as the they are called someone who can see the death of things. I can't understand this kind of conversation at all. It's okay if you don't understand. But what I want to tell you is that you shouldn't try to see things that are hard to see. Probably, if you want to, you can see the death of not living things. But in order to do that, your brain has to open its circuits from the classification of living things to the classification of not living things in order to understand. And that is normally an impossible process. As a result, it overloads your brain end up being useless. Useless, you mean, besides what we able to perceive death anymore? Of course not. Hey, Shiki, what happens to an engine that blows up from overload? Goes to the junkyard. Once an engine breaks, you can't use it again. Oh, that's it. In other words, the headache, the headache I get from seeing death is like the screaming of an engine that's working too fast. Understand? If you can just see it, it won't be a problem. But stop trying to see things you can't perceive. The blood vessels in your brain will burst, and it'll all be over. I'm speechless. I've been living like this without realizing the serious the seriousness of it all. You really have to thank the Magus who gave you those glasses. Most psychics use their abilities without realizing how dangerous they are, and end up disabling themselves. Well. Those kinds of people are often incompatible with society, so maybe that's just for the best. Huh. Seems like that's the reason I'm here. I'll let you go back to living the life you had before. Since they said that, he gave me these glasses. I have so much to thank her for. My chest tightens just thinking about it. That person, in so many ways, really did save me. I feel a sharp sens sens sensation. Not pain, but something strange, like an itch. Shiki? What, what is this? It was really only just for an instant, but it was like something was in my chest. Hmm? Not understanding, I placed my hand inside my shirt. Wetness. Something is sticking to my chest like ink. What is this? Something's wet? I pull out my hand from my shirt. I open my palms. It's bright red blood. Eh? <laughs> Sting. Another strange sensation. It takes me a horribly long time to understand that it's coming from the old scar on my chest. She eat that. Yeah, that's weird. Doesn't hurt, it's not even an open wound, but there's blood all over my chest. It's so... red. A beautiful, unmuddied red that steals my eyesight. Well, it doesn't hurt, so it's gotta be okay. Seems to have stopped bleeding, so there's no need to... Awkward stare is dumbfounded at my hand. No, more accurately, she stares at the red blood coating my hand. Arquid? Arquid doesn't respond. She just starts to breathe heavier. <sighs> As if she's trying to withstand pain. Hey, Arquid, What's wrong? Does your wound hurt? I grab her shoulders. And then she jumps back as if she was trying to escape. She stares at me like I am an enemy. Arquid? She... Key? Short, clipped. Her voice even contains enmity. enmity. I never thought about it. She averts her gaze awkwardly. What's wrong? You're acting strange. You still haven't recovered yet? Perhaps. It seems I pushed myself too hard. So, I'll go back now. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll call it a night. Yeah. I'll be waiting here tomorrow. 
Not looking me in the eye, Arkwood leaves quietly, quickly. I go up the residential hill and arrive at the outskirts of the mansion. I save my game so that I don't have to deal with this stuff again. It's around 2 in the morning. As expected, I'm totally assailed by sleepiness. I wonder if she's going to be okay. I'm concerned about how she seemed when we when we parted. It seemed like it wasn't pain from her wound, but... Hmm... What is that? It feels like there's someone lurking in the shadows, not illuminated by the street lights. Thump. My heart stops my breath. My blood rushes through my body. This sensation... Certainly, there's someone standing there. The figure gets closer and closer. Footsteps. The sound of dry footsteps reaches my ears. Thump. I have a bad feeling about this. Chills race up my spine. The figure draws near. Suddenly, the streetlights shatter loudly. The moon is hidden by the clouds. The whole world instantly turns to darkness. Thump. My heartbeat skips as if warning me of death. I jump back for no apparent reason. A blade runs through the darkness. Not being able to get away fully, my glasses are grazed by it. They fall to the ground with a clatter. The instant I start to say, are you, the clouds part and for a brief moment the dark figure is illuminated. What? A man wrapped entirely in bandages is, bandages is gripping a knife. The bandaged man goes to attack me again. I quickly ready my knife and stop it. Two slivers of light shoot towards each other. I can't think calmly. The fact that I'm being attacked causes my mind to panic. Clang, clang. Sparks fly from our clashing knives and scatter into the darkness. I still can't calm down. It's not because I'm being attacked. Clang. I swing my knife to cancel out the one attacking me from every angle. Why? What's surprising is that my body is completely stopping all the attacks in this darkness without a pause. My body is moving by itself. No, that's not it. All, all my arms are doing is seeking out the lines and points that I can see in the darkness with my glasses off. That's all I can see, so I swing my knife through the dark air after those lines. As a result, the managed man's knife is simply stopping mine. In other words, it's not that I'm defending myself, but he's defending himself from me. I can win. I don't know who he is, but there's no doubt. I'm overwhelming him. My blood rages forth from my advantage. I'll win. I'm stronger than him. Because I'm stronger, because he's trying to kill me, aren't I just returning the favor? <coughs> Clang. Clang. The sound of ringing metal echoes in the air, and I force him back towards the mansion wall. There. My eyes fixate on the line on his chest, and I thrust my knife forward. Momentarily, for some reason, I see a boy painted in blood and Akia's crying face. G I pull my knife back before completion. What am I, I? I'm trying to kill someone. Why? My head. My head hurts. My legs wobble, and I stagger backwards. As I do so, I empty the contents of my stomach. Blech. My chest starts to itch. My head hurts. The old wound on my chest burns. My eyes feel like they're going to burst out of their sockets. Uh, ah! I can't stop throwing up! The wild splatters all over the asphalt. And there, the badge man comes after me with his knife. <laughs> Clang. Another collision. My knife shoots towards his. This time, I'm, I really defend myself. I know where he's aiming. Since I know, I block him once again with another clang. 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 Despite not being able to see his knife due to its speed, I somehow manage to block it over and over. The reason I can defend myself is simple. Because where he's aiming are the lines on my body. So I know where he's aiming at, and I understand more than anyone that having them cut would mean instant death. So I have to defend it. No. Wait. Aiming for my lines? Uh, it's the exact opposite of before. 
That means, don't tell me, he... The bandaged man smiles in the darkness. Um, my heart rate goes out of control. Feeling some unnameable fear, I stumble backwards. He doesn't pursue me. He just smiles. His bloodshot eyes seem to be saying, So you finally realized it. As he steer sneers at me. You can see them? Yes, he also can see the lines. Then, he can also kill with one blow. The man laughs. He draws near while laughing. I he went down to my fingers, gripping my knife, tremble uncontrollably. Slice, slice, slice. The sound of flesh being pierced by a blade resounds three times. And then, a thud. A sound of a body hitting the wall. Eh? I can't grasp the situation. The bandaged man was suddenly pierced by three spear-like pipes. Not just pierced, but stuck onto the wall. Like an insect pinned in a bug, in a bug collection. You're in my way. His voice grates awfully. At the same time, the three spears of light like candles engulf him in flames. Ah! An anguished voice in a whirlpool of flames. In the darkness, that scene seems less cruel and almost beautiful. Ah! The bandage man, no, the bandages are burned already. His skin is showing. Wrapped in the flames, the man stares at me. His bloodshot eyes filled only with murder. His black eyes like a weapon bent on cursing Tono Shiki. What? Stunned, I can only watch. He runs off into the distance, still engulfed in flames. The moon reemerges. After those flames and that cursing voice, everything returns to silence like it was before. I fall on my knees and lean against the wall. I look up at the sky. In the direction where those spears flew from, someone is standing high and far off. Far away. Standing composed on top of the streetlight, I see a familiar figure. Eh? Robes like a priest from another country. Clutching her hand, large nail-like swords. Emotionless pale eyes. Blue, sky blue eyes. Senpai? Under the moonlight, I can only make out the silhouette. But she seems to resemble Senpai. Our eyes meet. The standing figure on top of this relay suddenly disappears like a ghost. Ah. Uh. I sit down roughly. Is it relief from my headache fading, or just the lifting of all this tension? Leaning my back against the wall, I start to drift off to sleep. Eight. Death. So, he's going to be found outside of the mansion by his own vomit. Passed out. Yeah, he you've been out drinking, haven't you? I think the game just crashed. Oh, wait, no, it didn't. Whew. Okay, but this seems like a nice place to stop. I think six axis, or... No, wait, Jason is going to start streaming something soon. And there's only nine minutes left anyway. So I'll just... Save it. Save it. Fucking triple saved!